What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. And moving on to the next question, we got to find this limit here. The limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 7 minus the absolute value of 1 minus 3x all over x to the power 3 minus 8. So this is a pretty unique limit. Notice first, you can't do a direct substitution. If we plug in 2, we would get 0 in the numerator because we'd have the absolute value of negative 5, which is just positive 5 minus the absolute value of negative 5, which is just positive 5 as well. 5 minus 5 is 0, and then 2 to the power of 3 minus 8 is 0. So it would be in indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So can't do a direct substitution. So there's something, there's another strategy we're going to have to use in order to solve this limit. And actually, to begin, what I want to do is talk about the absolute values separately first, both of those functions. So I'm going to start with the absolute value of x minus 7. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, an absolute value function, you can always convert to a piecewise function. And so this absolute value of x minus 7, we know that it's going to stay as x minus 7 as long as that expression is going to be positive, and let's actually say greater than or equal to 0. However, if this expression inside the absolute value is negative, so if x minus 7 is less than 0, if it's negative, then we're going to have to take that expression and multiply it by a negative 1. Right? So if we simplify this here, basically it's going to stay as x minus 7 as long as x is greater than or equal to 7, but it's going to be negative x plus 7 if I distribute that negative inside the bracket, when x is less than 7, right? Because if x is less than 7, if you plug in a number that's less than 7 here, you're going to get a negative value within the absolute value. So you got to multiply that value by negative 1 in order to make it positive, right? So this function converts to this here. Now, what about the absolute value of 1 minus 3x? Split these up. So, same thing. Basically, it's going to stay as 1 minus 3x as long as that 1 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 0. But if that 1 minus 3x is less than 0, if that expression is going to be negative within the absolute value, then we're going to have to multiply that expression by negative 1. And so if we simplify this here, basically what we would get, it would be 1 minus 3x. If we isolate for this x, we would end up getting um, 1 is greater than or equal to 3x, divide both sides by 3. So basically when x is less than or equal to 1 over 3, that expression is going to stay positive or be 0, so we can just keep it as 1 minus 3x. But if, um, if we isolate for the x here, if x is going to be greater than 1 over 3, then this expression here is going to be negative. And so we're going to have to multiply it by negative 1. And if we distribute that negative 1 here, we'd have negative 1 plus 3x, like that. Right? So first off, just took these two absolute value functions, converted them to piecewise functions just so we could see the different cases. And the reason why you want to do that is because now you want to go back to the limit that you're working with. Notice we have the limit as x approaches 2. So if x is approaching 2 for this function, which of these pieces are we going to use? Well, we're going to be using this piece here, negative x plus 7, because an x value of 2 is an x value that's less than 7. Okay, so this is going to end up being this over here. Okay, if this was like, uh, let's say, x approaching 8, right, if that's what the limit was, then we'd be using this piece, x minus 7, because 8 is greater than or equal to 7. But because we're approaching an x value of 2 for this specific x minus 7 absolute value function, we got to use this piece here because 2 is less than 7. So this would become that. And then we would have minus 
Now, what about the absolute value of 1 minus 3x? Well, if we're approaching 2, which case are we going to deal with? Well, notice that 2 is greater than 1 over 3. Right? And when x is greater than 1 over 3, we know that we're using this piece over here. And so basically this will convert to this expression. So we're going to have minus negative 1 plus 3x. All right, again, because we're approaching an x value of 2, and for an x value of 2, this absolute value function is going to be that expression. Now, if we are approaching an x value of negative 2, let's say, then this or this would convert to this because an x value negative 2 would be less than or equal to 1 over 3. That's the case we would be dealing with. Right? But in this case, we're approaching positive 2, so we're using the negative 1 plus 3x. And that's pretty much it for the numerator. So notice we took those absolute values and we sort of got rid of them with the proper cases. And that's why we wanted to create this piecewise functions initially to know what case we're dealing with for our particular limit for both of the absolute value functions. All right, so that's that for the numerator. Now we got to work with the denominator. Notice we got x to the power of 3 minus 8. And notice that that's a difference of cubes. So we know a difference of cubes just for a review, a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, that's equal to a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. That's the formula for a difference of cubes. So this x to the 3 minus 8, the 8 we could change to 2 to the power of 3. And so notice the a value is x, the b value is 2. And so we can just plug those values here. So we'd end up with x minus 2, x squared plus 2 times x, which is just 2x, plus 2 to the power of 4, which is 4. So x to the power of 3 minus 8, it factors into this here. And then this bracket, you can't factor further with a difference of cubes. So that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. Right, so now let's try to simplify what we have here. Let's see what happens. So we would have negative x plus 7. Now, if I distribute this negative inside the bracket, this negative 1 would turn into a positive 1. This positive 3x would turn into a negative 3x. So we would end up with, what, 7 plus 1, which would give us 8. And then negative x minus 3x, which would give us minus 4x. All over x minus 2 x squared plus 2x plus 4. And hopefully now you're seeing where we're going with this. So notice that in the numerator, we could factor out a negative 4. And if we do that, we would end up with um, negative 2 plus x or x minus 2. If you just factored out a positive 4, give me a sec here. If you just factored out a positive 4 in the numerator, you would end up with 2 minus x, like that. But 2 minus x and x minus 2 are not the same thing. That's what we're trying to cancel out. So you'd have to factor out another negative from here, and then it becomes x minus 2. All right? So I just did it all in one step. I factored out the negative 4. And now notice the x minus 2s cancel out. And now we can do a direct substitution. So we're going to end up with negative 4 at the top. 2 squared plus 2 times 2, so 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. Negative 4 over 12, that simplifies to negative 1 over 3. And so that is the final answer for this limit over here. Right? So kind of a tricky example because you got to convert these absolute values to the proper expressions depending on which case you're dealing with, depending on what x value you're approaching. So took those, converted them to piecewise functions first. Then I saw what case we were dealing with, plugged in those cases, so the absolute values go away. Then we had a difference of cubes in the denominator, and then you just work the uh, factors. The factors will cancel out. Negative 1 over 3 is the final answer.